Is it you? It's me too. All our girls at Applebee's are sending us. All right. So the range of motion, the range of motion tells us the degree through which we can move a joint. Okay? And uh, for a joint to be able to move through certain degrees, there are a couple of things that can determine the range of motion. Excuse me. The structure of the particular surface is what is actually binding them together. The strength of the ligaments, the action of the muscle and tendons, all of those can determine how far a joint can move. Okay? How far a joint can move. All right. So there is what we call the axis of movements. Okay, axis of movement, which means there is a type of clay through which the joint moves around. Okay, so that's just the main thing about it. All right, so we have some, some that we call multi-axial joints. All right, multi-axial joints means, for instance, shoulder joint, it can move in all of three degrees. It has three degrees of movement in the shoulder. Okay, go this way, go this way, go this way, backwards. This is not a whole lot of uh, degree of movements. All right. Why some other ones? Some other ones are what we call, we call <coughs> monoaxial or biaxial, which means they can only move in one direction. One can move in two directions. Okay, moving in one direction and in two directions. So very important. So the different types of synovial joints, the classes of synovial joints. Remember, we said this is the type of joint that is so numerous in our body because we do a lot of walking, a lot of bending, and all that. Very numerous. Okay. So you guys right. can turn to the uh, to the page which is 285 in the book while we go over the six classes, the six classes of this. Okay. And the six classes of synovial joints are. Ball and sockets, condyler, saddle, plane, inch, pivots. Pivots. Okay? So for ball and sockets, an example of ball and socket is going to be what? Between the humerus and what? In the book, in the book. On page 25. Humerus and what? And scapula, exactly. So that's an example of ball and socket. When we say ball and sockets, you can... That would be a hip. Hip also, yes. Hip also. Hip, scapula, yes. Okay? So, it has what? Multi-axial joints. Something like the head fitted into a cup. Multi-axial. Multi-axial means what? Uh, Different ways. <coughs> More than two. More than one. By axial is two... Plane, Shoulder is ball and socket, which means it's multi axial. Does that make sense? So you can move it in many directions. So let's just put it that way. So shoulder and hip. Condyc uh, condylar. The condylar, there is a type of bone in which we have a, so a convex surface which kind of fills into a type of shaped depression. Alright? So an example of that is what? Radio carpal between the radius and the wrist, the radio and the wrist bone, all right? And also metacarpal, you know, metacarpal and the phalange. This is metacarpal, sorry, this is the carpal bones, okay? Then the metacarpal phalangeal joints between the metacarpal and the, and the phalanx. The phalanx are the fingers, right? The metacarpal and the phalanx. So metacarpal phalangeal joints. So can only move in two planes. I can bend it this way, move it back. Okay? Two planes. Alright? Radio, copper joint, the center between here, this way, this way. Just two planes. And like the shoulder, that you can do a whole lot of movements. Multi eight. Okay? Alright, the other one is salu. The salu joints. The salu joints, if you look, take a look at it on the page 25. You can see that the salu joints is between. The carpal bone and the metacarpal. The carpal bone and metacarpal. Okay, so that's what actually binding uh, them together. So it's just a flat surface gliding on top of each other. They are usually what by axial. They only move in two directions. Two directions. Okay, 
two directions. So example of that, between the upper bones of the wrists, the torso bones of the ankle, also the articular surfaces of the vertebrae, they only move in two directions. Okay, so that's, uh, oh, what am I, sorry, my mind is talking about pain. Right. So, yeah, this is the one that we're still describing, sorry guys. So, is that, who's talking, what am I, all right? So trapeziometric carpal, the opposable, the thumb, between the trapezio and the metacarpal, remember the, the, the trapezio is one of the names of the carpal bones, okay? So which means the thumb, the metacarpal, and the trapezio, the side, okay? On the lower side, the carpal bones is the wrist, so the metacarpal joined to that trapezio, one of the names of the carpal bones. So that is an example of serving joints, okay? And also sternoclavicular joints between the sternum and what? And clavicle. It's an example of solid joints. So it's just two plane of movements. All right, the gliding. The gliding, we have two surfaces that is kind of sliding on top, on top of each other. All right, the ones between the carpal bones of the race, the tussle bones, and the articular processes of the vertebrae, they are gliding on top of each other. So the wrist, the proximal roll and the distal roll gliding on top of each other. All right, that's plain joints. That's plain. Okay. <coughs> All right. The other one is the inch. So the inch joints. Uh, let's see what we have here. The inch joint is what is between. Is between. The uh, is between. An example is elbow between the humerus and ulna. Between the humerus and ulna. All right. It's just one surface fitting into another surface. A convex surface fitting into what? A concave. All right? They're usually what? Monoaxia joint, which means they can move in one plane. It's like a door. Like a door. Inch. An example also is what? It's the knee. Knee can only move in one plane, like an inch. Okay? And we have doors right now that can move. Uh, <laughs> Almost 360 degrees. But it's going to be spinning around. But the usual door, they usually just Age, one plane, okay? All right? So the elbow joints, joint between the fingers and toes. The pivots, this one spins around a longitudinal axis. So let's say this is the axis, so it spins around. Did I press the record? Sure, sure, okay. I think you did. Yes, all right. Yeah, so that's pivots, all right? So that's money aches you. An example is what? Atlanto axial joint, and also joint between radio ulna of the elbow. That's pivots. Okay, that's pivot. All right, so there are a lot of ways through which we can talk about the movements of the decelerated joints, okay? So there is what we call a zero position, a zero position. This is a standard anatomical position. It's just for every part of our body when the palms are facing outward. outward. That's anatomical position, we call that a zero position which means when, when uh, a cadaver that is there, that's how they stay. That's an anatomical position, okay? Very important. So, when we are describing joint movements, bone joints, we are describing it in related to what? To the zero position. Either it's moving away from the zero position or returning to it, okay? So that's doing that. All right, flexion. Flexion, we are reducing the angle between the joint, joints. All right, let's do some algebra here. What is the angle? Uh, what is the angle on on the line called? Let's say we have this this angle. 180, 180. Okay. So if we bring this up, it's now here, which is less than what? 90 right now here. It's less than 90, right? So we are re when we are bringing this up, reducing the angle. We say we are flexing. We are flexing. We are flexing the angle. Okay? So that's we are reducing the angle. Alright? Extension. We're bringing it by what? To zero position. To the normal position. Okay? Straight line. So reduce it. Hyper extension. Okay? We flex. We bring it back. Then we are trying to take this back or towards away from the zero position. Okay? So we are extending beyond the zero position. Alright? 
So it's not all joints that can do that, but the diatrosis can do that. It's not all joints that can do that. Okay? All right? So taking it beyond. So this is the shoulder. We are flexing the shoulder. We bring it all the way backward. We are trying to do what to hyperextend. Okay? The hip. We're flexing the hip because this is the hip angle here. We're flexing, we reduce it. We are flexing the knee. Okay, when we bring it back, we extend it everything. So when we try to go this way, we are hyperextending. Anytime you go backwards, it's hyper. Not it depends on the Jones. position. The position. Of the okay. Yeah, the position of the joints. Okay? So the same thing, abduction is what's we are moving away from the body. Abduction is what's towards the body. Right? So when we talk about hyper abduction, uh, you move the end all the way almost like you're uh, touching the roof. So you are hyper ex extending or hyper abducting the limbs. Hyper abducting the limbs. <coughs> all right. So hyper abduction also. So towards the midline, but when you are crossing the fingers this way, which means you are what hyper abducting or all crossing the ankles. That's hyper abducting. Okay. All right. Elevation. You raise the shoulder up. And the pressure. You bring it down. Okay. So you so movement that lowers the body parts in the same plane. You bring it down. Up. Down. All right. Protraction. 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 You got the shoulder. You are protracting. You are actually moving the part of the body in a transfer or in an horizontal plane. Protraction. Go to this way. Watch this side. Pushing out? Yeah, pushing out. But this has to come out. Okay? Then retraction. Okay? So that's retraction, posterior movements. Circumduction. You have a zero position. Then you are rolling the end. Why this one is stationary? Okay, you are rolling the end. That's circumduction. Okay? Doc, she's got a question. Huh? All right, no, no, I'm not I asking can't the answer a question from this yet. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, well, when it's time. It's not necessarily a question. From no, 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 no. That's, that's okay. this one's on me right now. Okay, all right. All right. Not now, not now, not now. I'm confused. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, which one? Okay. Yeah, it's about this. It's, it's about this. Which one? The, the protraction? Yeah. The protraction and retraction? The protraction. When you're holding your hand out like this? Yeah. That's called protraction? Yes. It says hyperextension. The anterior. But it says hyperextension. So what is it? It says like, where does it say hyperextension? Yeah, the stop one. I think they're just hyperextension. Yeah, you got it too, right? What, which one is that? Are you talking about the shoulder when you say that? Or are you talking when, you, when you add a list, the stop sign, you hold your hand up like this. Wait, this is an M. Uh, where is it? Right. But it's also stating showing your palm to someone who is in front of so you. Showing your palm to someone who is. But that's showing your palm to someone. But always in front of you. They're thinking you're referencing the hand still. And it's, this is in regards to the. That's what I'm saying, it's the shoulder. Oh, the movement okay. of the shoulder. Just. When you go out like this. Remember, 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 I told you, I said the shoulder has to forward. Forward. Okay. okay. Yeah. Backward. That's retraction. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Right. There's one that's going to go like this. Like this. this is just your raising, that's elevation. Yeah. And the pressure bringing it back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. <coughs> so rotation. Rotation is actually when you spin. Okay, we are spinning on the longitudinal axis. So you got it this way, so moving it down. This is the longitudinal axis, you kind of spinning it. That's rotation. Yeah. Or the leg. Okay. Good way to play your issue. Right. <laughs> All right. So we have uh, the media rotation, which means you have sometimes the bones inward, inward, and outward. Okay? All right, now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you something, guys, that a lot of this you have to practice to actually get the image of it. Okay, you have to practice it. And sometimes here? on the, uh, what is it called right now? That's our cadaver. I think we have something like that there. So it can help you to see what is rotating, what is across, what is uh, uh, abducting. All right? Supination and uh, so pronation. Supination is the anatomical. Pronation is bringing it on top. Okay? All right, flexion. All right? Flexing the trunk on the hip. Okay. 
extension, stretch in the trunk or neck. Hyper extension, see? This one, this is, we're hyper extending here, back. right? Okay, so the lateral flexion, tilting. Okay, um, the right and left rotation of the trunk, right and left rotation of the trunk. To the left, to the right, rotation of the trunk. Same thing with the neck, okay? All right, the mandible, the protraction, the protraction, okay, it's just like pulling the mandible out and bringing it back, okay? It's the same thing, lateral extension, then media extension, bring it back, okay? So, all right, radial flexion, same thing, you got the radius. The radius right here, so you're flexing the radius. The owner going towards the middle, all right? An abduction of fingers, fanning out. You're spreading the fingers, abduction. This, the two go this way, the two go this way, okay? Go this way. All right? I mean, the physical therapists, occupational therapists, they are usually the master of this because when they are trying to rehabilitate the patient to see what parts they need to work on, they do all of this radio motion. Of course, the nurses, head to toe assessment, part of you just do like elbow, honor, I mean, elbow, shoulder, and all that, too, or hip, hip, or knee, ankle, to see if the patient has good range of motion. Okay? All right. So the primer abduction, primer abduction. So you're moving away the thumb from the hand. Okay? This is the thumb, is this way, moving it away. That's abduction. Okay? All right? Abduction. An opposite of thumb, bringing it back. You're using the thumb to touch the teeth of the fingers. Yeah. All right. The dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. The foot is on a straight line. When you raise it to decrease the angle of the of the ankle, you have dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion. Let's say this is the this is the this is the foot. All right, this is the superior surface that, I'm, that we're seeing, and this is the posterior surface, all right? When you flex this way, that's just a flexion. Bring it back to zero position, plantar flexion, okay? Plantar flexion. Can you put your hand like that again? Mm -hmm. when, they, when you have a physical and stuff like that, you lift it up, and they take that little prick thing that goes like that underneath, you just... Oh, to check if you have a yeah, reactions that? and all that? Yeah, what is um, that if you go the wrong way? Um, you, you're talking about the, the one on the foot. Yeah. Okay. All right. There is a type of risk, reflex. He's, he's talking about reflex. You know, in children, we test it out. Okay. There is a certain age in which it should go away. Okay. We call it Babinski reflex. Babinski. Okay. For the nurses, as part of what we call your Babinski reflex. Okay. Babinski reflex. That's neuro assessment, neuro assessments. Also, if a patient has a stroke, you do it. You use the use the tip of patella hermann. You know that's shiny parts. So you kind of struggle those ways. See? So there is a way that you and I should have a, re a response this way. Okay, for those that have a babesco effect, it's almost like fanning out, which shows that the neurons there they are not responding quite well. So there are like that, aren't you? There are a lot, but the, the usual one that we usually do on the on the sole of the foot. So you strike it this way, okay? So it should be able to go the, I mean we should all bring it down as a like a reflex. We are reacting to that. But for such patients that they have a neuro neurological problem, they're probably doing it the opposite way. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a way to test the reflexes. It's alright. Okay. Alright. The inversion and inversion. The soles, this is where we turn it medially. Let's say this is the this is the foot. We turn the sole medially. That's inversion. Eversion to turn the sole. Eversion. Laterally. So in inside back to the zero position. Eversion. Okay? So the inversion, the soles are turned medially. Medially, like this. You can see? That's inversion. That's the sole. You turn it medially. Eversion. You turn the sole laterally. Okay. So it's a type of 
or assessing movement on the on the ankle. All right. So supination of the foods is when we are combining a whole lot of plantar flexion, inversion, and adduction. Pronation, dorsiflexion, inversion, and adduction. Okay. All right. So let's look at some of the joints. The TMG. The TMG we already said is the combination between what and what. TMG. TMG. Temporal mandibular joints. Temporal mandibular joints or temporal mandibular joints. Okay. All right. So we have a lot of ligaments that are binding them together. The lateral, the sphenomandibular ligaments. When you have a deep yawning or strenuous depression of the angle, can, also, can, do, can cause what? It can dislocate the TMG. Actually, so the conduit, that T actually pops out. We can slip forward, right? So you can press, you can push it back. You press it down, you press down on your, one of your molar tooth. You know the premolar, the back tooth, that's the molar. The pre uh, we have the canine, incisors, premolar, and molar. Okay, so when you press your molar down, then why you push, push it back. Okay? Alright, all those uh, uh, maslofacial surgeons, I mean, they are pretty good at that. One of, one of the specialties that I, I kind of like a little bit it is because of the action, the orthopedic surgeons. You know, when they take, when they take, excuse me. Yes, when they take when they take the uh, limbs, let's say he's got a shoulder something, then he said, "You don't mind? We're gonna do a little bit." Oh, <laughs> when they are talking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it. No Gibson does. <laughs> Bam! Up against the wall. Now. So when they are talking to the patient, they're just you know, in talking to the patient, particularly in children, they're using their to distract them. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. You can hear it too. Sometimes huh? you can hear that. Oh yeah, yeah. I said pops it back. That's yeah, nice. it pops it back. This is the action that I like. Well, sometimes we have to torture somebody. That's not nice. I said it's the action that I like. Yes. The action is the not torturing. Action. Yeah, okay. The, the, okay, let me put it. The process yes. of putting back. This is <laughs> just like when there's a, a hip dislocation. Oh, okay, that's worse. The, that's the, worse. Go, around, the go around here. The whole the leg. So, then somebody kind of straighten the thigh. So, okay, all right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. All right. So that does that. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, you can do it to any any any, any joint that is dislocated. Okay, at least. Hmm? No, you you don't carry long. You cannot really do it to the knee. You, well, if it pops out, not really pops out. Maybe the ligament is not holding. Maybe to the side. Okay. They lose. Oops. Bring it back, yeah. All right, so because TNG is a type of synovial, you can see the fluid in there, okay? These are all the ligaments that are holding it together, okay? All right, the TNG syndrome usually affects 75 million of Americans. Okay, the signs and symptoms, you're going to see, and you're going to hear the clicky sound. It's almost like grinding teeth. It's clicky sound, all right? So the patient can have a pain that goes down the neck, all the way towards the shoulder and back. If a patient is having this type of pain, it goes down the neck to the shoulder and back, particularly down the neck and shoulder. Another thing that we have to think of is what? Who knows? Maybe you guys have come across it. A patient is having a neck pain, going to the shoulder and all that. Oh, yep. heart attack, that's right. Yeah. On the left side, though. The left side, yeah. Right. The left side, on the left side. It's going that way. Oh, go. Go check them. Check them. Okay. The, the first thing, tell the patient to call 911. All right. Next thing, at least put the patient on EKG. All right. We're going to talk about EKG here. All right. So, it can also cause what we call intermittent facial pain, or sometimes it's very severe and causes what? Severe headaches and brassicles. Or sometimes they ring it in the ear, tinnitus. Okay? Alright? So, what are the things that can, that can cause it? It could be a combination of psychological or sometimes what we call mal occlusion, which means when the teeth they are not aligned properly and the patient, I mean, the patient is trying to eat, so it's trying to gather the food on the teeth in, in, in the process of that. Okay? Psychological management, physical therapy, analgesic, anti-inflammatory drugs we can give to the patient, or sometimes we give what we call 
a dental appliances to align the tooth properly. Just when you think. Okay. Align, align. And once aligned properly, you can actually squeeze them or push it out. Okay? So that's TMJ syndrome. TMJ syndrome. TMJ syndrome. All right. The shoulder joints. The shoulder joints is also, we already said it's a delicate joint. Now, the thing about it is, you see, the shoulder joints, it has a whole lot of support. There, is, there are what we call rotator cuff muscles. Rotator cuff muscles. <coughs> okay? There are, there are four muscles which helps in making sure the head of the humerus is actually fairly tightened into the glenoid cavity of the scapula. Yeah. So I had rotator cuff where they said that they had to clean the, the burrs. Off. It depends on which of the rotator cuffs, because we have four of this. Shoulder. Yeah, no, which of the rotator cuff. Oh. The rotator cuff, they are the tendons, tendons of this four muscle sits. Oh. So it depends on which of the, which of the muscle. All right, everybody understand what I'm saying? Right. We call it rotator cuff muscles. They are four muscles in which their tendons actually help to lock in the head of the humerus to the joints, okay? So, number one is supraspinatus. Supraspinatus muscle. Okay, infraspinatus. Infraspinatus. Okay, uh, teres. Uh, uh, actually, I think it should be teres major or teres minor. Then subscapularis. 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 Let's see. I think it's teres major or teres minor. Let's see. Yes, the teres minor. The teres minor. Okay, on the teres minor. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what we call rotator of cuff muscles. Sits. That's the uh, acronym for it. All right. So the how to lock the head. So it depends which of the tendons they are thinking that the spore is actually affecting, which they have to surface it. So it depends because we have four of those. Okay, main one. All right. Now the thing about it is, the thing, the, it has a lot of supports on the upper parts. You can see all of this supraspinatus tendon. You can see uh, a whole lot of tendons which is locking up. But on the lower parts, it doesn't. As a result, there is what. A risk for downward dislocation, mm -hmm. downward dislocation of the head of dislocation of the humerus because it doesn't have any support underneath. Does that make sense? Because the top, they are well supported, but the here it doesn't have any support. So it, again, dislocate that one. Huh? I know what bone spur he's talking about. My wife had to have that. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so very important. So the tendon helps to strengthen the joints. All right, there are also type of ligaments which goes around it. Then we have four borsa. What, what did we say about borsa? Borsa. I'm sorry? The glue sac. The sac. But what, is, what, what, is, what do we have at the sac? What does it do? Uh, it lubricates the joint. No, the... Alright, let, let's, let's get it one by one. Alright, okay. Uh -huh. On this side, let's be able to come to this side. I'm sorry? Okay, it helps cushion muscle to muscle so that muscle to muscle doesn't rub on each other. And also tendon. Tendon to what? The bones, so that because as the tendon is passing over the bone, kind of helps protect it so that the tendon is not rubbing on the on the bone. Okay, right, the muscle, right. So because we have a whole lot of tendon that is coming here, so we have four muscle here. We have the subdeltoid, subacromia, subacroid, and subscapulary muscle, which help in protecting as the tendon is going to lock in the end of the humerus. Okay, all right. So you can see all of the the muscle. See, we have a, lot, a whole lot there. That's the glenoid cavity, same thing. 
Okay, that's the uh, that's the cadaver one. Okay. All right. Show that this location could be very painful or sometimes can cause what a permanent damage. As I said, the downward displacement is most common because rotator cuff muscle is not protected under the, the wrong piece. So it displaces downward because nothing is strengthening it. Okay, nothing is strengthening it. All right? Now, it's often happen when the arm is abducted, then it receives what's a blow from above. Maybe somebody, maybe kids playing around, kind of striking their hands, somebody just jump on the hands, kind of can dislocate downwards because there is no support underneath. Okay? All right, so children are prone to that. All right, the elbow is another type of joints. Okay? It's another type of joint. It's also a synovial joint. Synovial joint. So it's actually formed by humeral ulnar joints. It's actually between the humerus and ulnar. The radius does not participate in it. The radius doesn't. All right? It's actually between the humerus and the ulnar. Okay? Mirror and the ulnar. All right? Okay? All right, hang on, let's back up a little bit. Yeah, no, sorry, the radius participate because it's actually two articulations. We have the two radius and ulnar, radius and ulnar, and the humeral, sorry, okay? So we have the humeral ulnar and the humeral radial joints, okay, which eventually helps to form the elbow joints, all right? Very important. So we have some bursa around there too. We also have some ligaments, which help to strengthen the joints, okay? What type of, what type of joint is elbow? What type of joint? What type of synovial joint is elbow? What type of synovial joint is elbow? Hema, Say that again. You, you said it. You said it. You got it. So, is that hinge? Hinge. 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 Right. One way. Exactly. It only moves one way. It only moves one way. Okay. It moves one way. So very important. It also allows for what? Pronation and supination. All right, particularly the head of the radial. Okay, so you can see all of the ligaments. Okay, all right, the hip joints is another type which is very interesting. The bias weight has a deeper socket, much more deeper than the glenoid cavity. Much more deeper than the glenoid cavity. All right. So the acetabulum, that's the the hole through which the head of the femur gets into. It's got a whole lot of ligaments, which is making sure everything is fine. It's well locked in there. Okay. You can see all of the ligaments. The okay. iliofemoral ligaments, the femoral ligaments, femoral ligaments. All of these ligaments are named based on the bones that are involved. For instance, iliofemoral, between the ilia and femur. Iliofemoral ligaments. Okay. Make sure that the place is well tightened. See, that's in the condemnor. You can see the acetabulum. It's a deeper hole. Okay? All right. The dislocation of the hip is very here, but however, some children or some infant, they can suffer from what we call a congenital dislocation. Why? Because the acetabulum here, you see, is deep. But in their own case, in their own case, it's not deep. Okay? As a result, the head kind of pops up. Because it's not deep to actually get in very well. All right? So we'll give them this. A jacket for one for like two to four months. Okay, in part of the places like in developing countries in which uh, they step back their children, you guys have seen that before, right? Just before earlier. Yeah. Okay. So they get a good wrap. We just tell the mom to back the child often. Why? Because in backing the child, you're actually extending the hip. Then it's actually helping to position into the acetabulum, the deeper place. So we tell the mom to back it often. As a result. Is that so? That's good to carry the baby like yeah, that. If, if, yes, if a baby, if a baby has that, even oh. if it doesn't have that, so it's so, still good. So it's still good. Oh, okay. it's still good because uh, part of the part of the importance of that is to promote bonding between mom and the baby. Yeah. It's just like breastfeeding promotes uh -huh. bonding also. Okay. Uh -huh. Right. I'm sorry. So you're talking about that before about having the mother go out in early morning to give them the vitamin D. Right. Right. The early morning song. Okay. All right, the tibia, the nail, the nail, this one is very, is very large and most complex, most complex, and it is what? It's inch, it's inch. So when you look at the knee, we're talking about the meniscus, the lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus, which is the 
thick part. Then we have the ligament, which runs between the, the femur and the tibia. The anterior cruciate ligament, what we call the ACL, and the posterior one. It helps to lock the knee on the tibia. So that it doesn't, the knee just, just move anyhow. So it's very complex. The reason is it bears a lot of weights. Okay? It bears a lot of weights. All right? So it's primarily what? Hinge joints. Okay? So you can see the meniscus. The meniscus. All right? You can see all the ligaments. This is the posterior view. That's the anterior view. All right? So it's got a joint capsules. So there are a lot of tendons that goes into the joint that helps to stabilize it. The quadriceps tendon, the quadriceps, the quadriceps, they are the muscles of the anterior part of the thigh. thigh. They have a whole lot of tendons which helps to lock the knee also. Very important. Okay? On the back, the muscle that we call semimembranous muscle has its own tendon that goes in which helps to lock the knee. Helps to lock the knee. Okay? So you can see it. Right there. Alright? We're talking about the pad, the meniscus, which helps to absorb shock. Also prevent what we call side to side rocking. Rocking. Side to side rocking. Alright. There are a whole lot of ligaments that goes in there. Alright? Now, intracapsular ligaments, they are the ACL and what? And PCL. Intracapsular. Alright? The anterior one, what does it do? It prevents hyper extension of the knee. Alright? Remember, we flex the knee this way, we extend it. So it prevents hyper extension because when we are walking, I mean, we are standing, we should be able to hold firm. So we can easily hyper extend, then which means we're not going to be able to have a good stability. All right? So prevent hyper extension when the ACL is pulled tight. All right? ACL is also what's common site of knee injury. Knee injury. All right? Why is the posterior one? The femur that is resting on the tibia, it's prevented from sliding off. So something is holding it in the back, so that you don't go nowhere, we make sure you're stable. Okay, because it's very important so that it doesn't just slide up, slide up and the patient just falls. Okay? So very important. Alright, we, we have a whole lot of bossy boss also. Look at it. 13 bossy. Why? Because we have a lot of tendons that are going into the knees. We got a lot of tendons that are going into the knees. because we have a whole lot of tendons right there, okay? All right, being able to lock and unlock the nails, very important, okay? When we, are, we extend the knee, fully extended, the ACL works, it helps us to lock it, so it doesn't slip, right? To unlock, the popliteal muscles has to contract, and the, what? the femurs rotate laterally, then we unlock, okay? So very important, you can see, that's, that's it in cadaver. All right, the knee is highly vulnerable. Look at it here. Oh, man. Mm. That was the time that I watched one of the uh, Super Bowl. Oh, the guy just landed on his outstretched elbow. You can see just twice. And guess what? The guys, they replayed it again. I said, why are you replaying it? Uh. Yeah. I mean, they replayed it again. Why are you replaying it? Yeah, if you want to get it, I mean, show it. You can go ahead and show the clip, but don't show the clip to the whole world when we're watching us, you know. We all know something happened, we saw it. We don't replay it again to us. That's not that's not good. Alright. So the ACL, that's the one that's commonly injured. Alright? Commonly injured. And the healing is very slow. Why? Because they have a poor blood flow. You can see that's the ACL. You can I'm sorry? Is there any ACL that's all right, arthroscopy is how we are, we are using a type of scope to look into the joints. And there are a lot of procedures that are done 
under the arthroscopic procedure right now. Arthroscopic, okay? So we can use it to repair ACL, usually nine months, for it to be healed completely. The ankle joints is between, the medial part is between the tibia, the ankle joints, this is the tibia and the fibula. The medial part is between the tibia and the talus. The talus is the top, it is, it is top bone, okay? While the lateral one is the fibula, and the talus, the fibula and the talus, okay, forms the ankle joints. It's, it's a type of joint that provides what we call a more restricted joint, more restricted range of motion than the wrists. Because we have one type of motion, unless they're doing just special of there, okay? All right, the ligaments, there are a lot of ligaments that goes in there, okay? But they actually stand on, seems to be the one that is most common, okay, that we all can feel. You can feel, okay? All right. How the calf muscles extend to the calcaneum, so it helps the plantar plantar flexes the foot. As a result, limits the circulation. Now, when there is a torn ligament or tendons, we call that what sprain. Or sprain. You see that that area is what is swollen. Okay? It's swollen. It's swollen. So we have a whole lot of tendons. So it's swollen. All right. You can see all of the tendons going to the ankle, going to the ankle, going to the ankle. In the cadaver, you see right there. All right, arthritis is what? When we're talking about a very broad term for pain and what? Inflammation. Pain and inflammation. Broad term. All right? It can cause by infection, can cause by injury, can cause any, anything. It's just a broad term, arthritis. It's just something that's wrong with the joints. All right? Very quickly, disease here in the United States. Rheumatologists, we're talking about the physicians, the physicians that are those ones that treats this type of problem. Osteoarthritis is a type of one that is very common, okay? It's a common type. This is when the joint is getting worn out, wear and tear, all right? From years of using it, the cartilage becoming softened and degenerating, you're going to be hearing a crack sound, crack sound of the joint. We call that crackly sound, we call it crepitus. You can, it's just like, uh, it's just like the type that uh, when somebody has a cracking sound in the TV, we can hear it, you're moving the and hear it, yeah, yeah, okay, or either or any joints, there is a problem, okay, all right. So, bone spores can develop, okay, on the bone that is exposed, exposed, bone spores can develop on Type of bone tissue that is exposed, which can cause pain. Bone spot. Be very tough. With that rheumatoid arthritis, you can't be cured from that. No. No, the rheumatoid, uh, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis because it's autoimmune. It's kind of tough. It's autoimmune. Can do what we call a palliative treatment and all that. Yes. So, but total, cure. total cure. Not really, because it's autoimmune. You guys know what we call autoimmune disease. Yes. Autoimmune disease is when the body is fighting against itself. Yeah. Autoimmune. Okay, the body fight, fights oh, against right. itself. Oh. Remember that the white blood cells fights against what? The white blood cells. Bacteria. Bacteria. So, and the white blood cells. Oh, please, before I forget. The, for, uh, the lady in the bookshop brought. The, the other oh, section that has the, the pigs. Pig so if you guys don't have it, you have to go to the bookshop to get to get yours. Now the other thing is, now you guys know I, I have to do mid midterm evaluation thing. We just have to sign and all that. Oh yeah. So tonight, whatever grade goes in tonight, great. So whatever is not in, which means whatever is not in by tonight, particularly the lab quiz, because I haven't gotten some lab quiz. So you all know that the grace period expires Saturday nights, right? You all know that, right? Grace period. Grace period yes. The 24 hour grace period. Oh, we, hang on one second. Hang on one second. 24 hour grace period expires Saturday nights. So, which means we got to Sunday, Monday. So, that's five points daily right now. So, whoever get it into me, all right, if you get it into me today, so it's just going to be 10 points, which is not much because a whole lot of you are getting 100, 100, 100. So, if you get like 100, okay, still take 90 90, okay. So, which I'm gonna just saying the more is going, the more down, down, down. Okay, yes, go ahead. Um, if you didn't like answer or email back, it doesn't mean you didn't get it, right? 
No, no, I think, did you, have I put, I, I think up to like Friday, every time that I got in, I put the grades in. Okay. I mean, right. it, I didn't put it in the participation of Friday? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm like causing. I'm looking at my grades, and none of the participation is You sure? I'm sure. That's not true. None of the participation for the whole two weeks? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure you're? Yeah, you're mine, some of mine are I know we're talking about some joints. Of mine are oh, yeah, some of your participation? Some mine's not either. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, sometimes so, I gotta check it then. I gotta check it. Thank you. I, I gotta check. I know it. I wasn't. I gotta check. But but uh, who who has all this? I mean, I think it's just one day that I haven't pulled the participation. Maybe last. Last no, Wednesday. A lot of days. A lot of days? Yeah. 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 I really? Was, I was a couple of days. From the first week. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, just, yeah. Oh, I, I gotta check. Then something is probably might be wrong with the system. I got my first week. Oh, okay. you, got, you got all your first week, right? Yeah, I know there's some days. Yeah, I missed it. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll check it. I'll check it. I got a, a, a roster that I go. I'll check it. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't have any of yours? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who else doesn't have any of these? I don't think I've had any. That's what I have, I'm check. I have some. Oh, you have to look. You yeah, have some? Like, we're like week one, week one, day three. For the first week one. Yeah, or like day two. Like oh, day two of week one? Of week one, yeah. Or something like that. We didn't we have, have school, school that day, remember? Oh, we, yeah, yeah, we didn't have school. Okay, the day that we didn't have school, you know, of course. <laughs> I don't get credit for that. Yes. That was on the Tuesday, right? Uh, yes. Of course, not nothing. Oh, yeah. Okay. We don't. Mind either. I well, I just saw one participation. You got one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that, that one. You got one. That one too. One. We did two. Okay, we two did two. Okay, I checked that one. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. Day one, day three, day one, day two. That one. Yeah, nice. we, we, we week three. We are we are just in week three. Today is week three. You remember? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about week one though? It's it's day two. <laughs> okay, week two, day two and three, okay? Yeah. And then week one? Yeah. I don't have one. Week right. one is there, right. Okay, all right, I'll check it. Day two and three for week, week two. But remember that week two, no, week one, day two, nothing, because we have all the day. Okay, I'll check it, thank you. Week two, day three. You don't have it, soon. okay, day two, day three. All right, I'll check it. Okay, now for, for uh, the lab quiz, the lab quiz, for those that came in, um, is it Thursday? I think I put the whole lot in on Friday. It's on Friday. So, but I got the ones that came in after, I got the dates in there. Okay? So, but there were a lot of people that actually submitted on the dates. So, maybe like a day after or something like that. Still on that same thing. Okay, alright. So, just to let you guys know, so whatever is not in today, by tonight, I do everything. So, I put Missing so <coughs> chapter one through to seven. When is the due date for chapter seven connects? The due dates 14. Was it today? I think that was due Saturday, right? I think it was due the 15th. Okay, 14th or the 15th. 15th, okay. So, which means your connect chapter one through to seven should be in, it's going to be part of the midterm evaluation thing, and also your lab quiz. Okay, so don't add, don't tell me that how come your chapter eight is not there right now. Just hold up. Okay, all right. So, but one through the seven should be completed right now. So by tonight I'm going to update everything. So by tomorrow I bring in the paper. So whatever whatever you see that shows on your grade by tomorrow, from those things that haven't been in, it shows that it's missing. All right. Everybody get it? Got it. And all right. We have a lab. Oh, it's again coming up, right? Yes, which is going to be on today. It's going to be due in another two weeks. Oh, it'll be due in two weeks, yes. not for Friday. No, 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 no. It's okay. going to be due in another two weeks. Okay? All right. So the rheumatoid arthritis is autoimmune, which can attack a whole lot of joints. Ankylosis is when the joints are fused together. Revision can occur. We can treat with steroids and aspirin. Okay? Arthroplasty. We are replacing what? A disease joint with prosthesis. Okay? You see, very deformed. It's all the joints at the back. That's not what happened when you had that? Yeah. For real? Yeah. This is a real patient. 
<laughs> you, you haven't been to a nursing home? Yeah, I worked there and in a hospital. But I'm saying it's nothing to stop that is going to... It is autoimmune, unfortunately. You know, the track, you can give steroids and all that, so... <laughs> you see that? That's going to be you in a couple years. Stop it! <laughs> all right. So these are the joint prosthesis that we can be able to do. Okay? All right, let's take five minutes break. I got a video that I'm going to show you. Now, you guys want to use your thing tomorrow? Your, the, the, the lifeline. Yeah. All right.